Shooting in small spaces can be troublesome at times, and it doesn't have to be. Today we're talking about view clipping. What is going on ProEDU community? It's Dustin Valkama, and today we're talking about view clipping or camera clipping, exactly what that is and how it can be used so that you're no longer really confined to shooting with longer lenses in a small room or environment that really makes it nearly impossible to get the shot that you want without having to do loads of other work to hide and unhide certain elements in your scene for particular shots. View clipping kind of solves all of that. So let's go ahead and talk about exactly what that is. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. I just have a quick little diagram to discuss what these clipping planes are, and then we'll dive into Cinema 4D and take a look at it. Now, you'll see here on the left, we have our camera, and we have our field of view here. And we have these three different planes that are in the scene. So we have our near plane, and this is going to be the plane that is closest to the camera and we can move this plane forward and backward in virtual space. And this is going to allow us to cut out certain objects that are close to the camera. And then we also have our far clipping, which is going to allow us to cut things out from the background. And then we have our focal plane here. So if you're a photographer, uh, been working in 3D for a while, you understand what a focal plane is. And this is just going to be the distance from your camera to your subject and the plane of focus that is there. So that being said, what we can do is actually use these clipping planes to cut through various elements in our scene. So we have our near plane here. And right now, if we see these yellow lines or this yellow box, this is going to be just a small room. And here in the middle, we have our subject. Right now, if we're shooting outside of this room with, say, something like a 200 millimeter lens, we would definitely run into this wall. And this would be a problem in shooting within this small, maybe 10 foot by 10 foot space. And we can really get rid of this issue in 3D. So the way we do that is we take our near clipping plane and we go ahead and just move that far enough that it's going to cut this wall out within the field of view of our camera. And it's really important to note that this clipping plane or these clipping planes altogether are going to be perpendicular to the line of sight with the camera here. So if we were to just take a straight line and move this all the way here from the camera all the way down in between these two angled lines there for the field of view, the clipping planes are going to be perpendicular to that. So it is possible to cut a wall here and just have it halfway cut. And we'll see that type of bits of artifacting from that cut that we'll show in 3D here in a moment. Now with the far clipping plane here, we can move this forward and backwards. So again, just like the near plane, we could go ahead and cut out everything directly behind our subject or we can just move that further outside of what might be a window on this wall. So that's enough talking about it here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in Cinema 4D. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and we're going to be taking a look at view clipping here. Now, as we start to move into the scene here, we can see that clearly we have walls in our way and we can infinitely zoom and this is just going to be a bit troublesome for us and not allow us to see what we have going on. Now, if we get in towards close objects here and we get super close, we'll eventually start to see this clipping. And this is exactly what we're talking about today is the ability to get in and remove objects from our frame. Now in Cinema 4D, you have various presets that we can use here. So if we are just using our perspective viewport, just our default, viewport here, we can go ahead and press control or command D on the keyboard. This is going to bring up our settings here in the attribute manager. Now we'll just sit into the project settings tab and then down towards the bottom here, you'll see that we have view clipping. So currently it's set to medium and we'll go ahead to something like huge 
And this is for larger objects or larger scenes. So if we back away here, we can see now that as we start to get in closer towards various objects, this is definitely going to start creating more of a cutaway effect to certain elements in our scene. And we can see here that currently we have our near clip is set to 39.37 inches. I have this on displaying inches from centimeters, different project I'm working on. Nonetheless, if we go ahead and we change to a different preset here, say from huge to medium, uh, we can see now that we are definitely getting this wall here that's really showing up in frame and it creates kind of that same issue for us. So what if we actually want to go ahead and create a camera so we'll create just a standard Cinema 4D camera here. Press the viewfinder icon right next to it and activate that. We'll go ahead and set this to something like 24 millimeters. This is a little bit more standard for interior photography. And now as we start to get close to our objects here, we can see that we're starting to get this view clipping again. Now, if I wanted to shoot, say, outside this wall and I wanted to capture the entire interior of this kitchen, you see that if I start to back out, we start to run into this issue with walls. Now, I don't always like to go into my object manager and find the wall and start to hide various things. And that can be a little bit tedious. So what I'll do is inside my camera, now this works for any 3D camera, the parameters might just be located in a different area. But what we can do here is head directly into our details tab here for the Cinema 4D camera object. And we'll see that we have the enable near clipping and the enable far clipping is disabled. Now what we'll do here is we can take this near clip and we can just drag and start to move this up. And what you'll see here is that we're at a slight angle. And so what this is doing is it's cutting this cube that we have here in place of a wall. It's cutting that cube based on the view of the camera. And so this is very much like a focal plane in photography where it's going to be cut horizontally throughout the entire frame that you're shooting. So where a focal plane would come in and this would just be completely horizontal and you'll see this if you shoot at an angle, you'll see kind of this weird focal line that's happening if you're shooting something like macro. And it's the same thing with these clipping planes. They're completely perpendicular to the camera's line of sight. And so as you start to get to angles, you can start to see these clips cutting away walls in weird areas. So what we can do here is just go ahead and zoom out just a little ways. And we'll go ahead and take our near clip and we can bring that up until we start to hit this wall. And now we can see here that we're able to zoom in a little bit and we can go ahead and maybe frame our camera the way that we want it here to capture the entire, we'll say back wall here first. And now we can start to just move this back and we'll see all of our elements start to come back into frame again. And now we could use this to go ahead and set up this shot without having to go and hide the wall that was there. So this is very useful for many different things. I've seen product cutaways uh, using this same type of method so on and so forth. It's really neat. Now, if we go ahead and enable our far clipping here and we start to adjust this, currently it's set at an insane rate <laughs> towards the back of what most scenes uh, would be. If we set this to something like maybe 150, we'll see that now we're cutting out the back wall and we can go ahead and move this clipping plane for the far clip back and forth and we can see the really cut away effects that it's giving us. So we can render just certain parts of this scene, maybe just right outside a back window here if there were one, and we could composite something into that. So I really tend to use this a lot if I'm working on say client projects for interior products that are using pre-built scenes that have a large environment around them. I can use, just use this view clipping to start getting rid of various elements that I don't need behind certain points in the scene. And so again, with the 
near clip, we can go ahead and adjust this. Just make sure that the bottom part of this clipping plane is further towards your camera <laughs> than what you're going to be rendering so that you don't happen to be rendering any weird artifacts or cutouts this way. Um, so that wraps this up here for view clipping and hopefully it gives you a decent example of what it is. All right, so that's the introduction to view clipping or camera clipping, whatever you wanna call it. It's all kind of wrapped around some of the same stuff here. It's the ability to shoot through walls. Now, we've talked about the near clip and how you can use that from the point of your camera really to designate where you want those certain elements to be cut out in your scene, more in your foreground range. And then the far clip is to cut out elements that are behind your subject further on into the background. Now, just remember that these do work in a perpendicular frame filled environment. So that plane is going to run all the way across your frame. So just make sure that when you're working with something like your near clip, that you have that far enough to push all the way through that ob object that you're trying to cut. Because if you don't do that, it could lead to issues. And if you're not paying enough attention, you may spend a lot of time rendering something out just to find out that a third of it or a quarter is cut off on one side. Um, this is something I wish I knew a little bit more about when I had started 3D because I was doing things the hard way and just removing various objects as I was starting to go through rendering different angles and it gets a bit tedious that way. So view clipping is definitely a good way to go about that and that's going to wrap up today's video. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Never stop learning. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.